Dr. Sherry Berger here with Holohan's Hot Topics this week, back with Dr. Melissa Holohan. Hey, doctor, what's happening in the world of critical care this week? Well, this week we chose a very interesting retrospective study looking at the influence of crossmatch on the post-transfusion PAC cell volume in cats with PAX red cell transfusions. This study was actually done by um, Weltman and colleagues out of uh, Cornell University and was a very nicely done retrospective study. And we certainly know that feline blood transfusion is commonplace. And it's becoming more uh, common as we have blood banks and availability of feline blood that can be shipped over to us. And so the more we have available, the more we're certainly seeing this used as a, a common practice in veterinary hospitals. Allo antibodies, though, are present against red blood cell antigens, and that's been well established in feline blood. So the most common one we're familiar with is type A blood having anti-B allo antibodies already naturally present in the blood. So as we know, we have to be giving type-specific blood transfusions in cats or we're going to see some pretty life-threatening hemolytic transfusion reactions. And so we do know that the AB antigens are well established. However, it was recently in 2007 that they evaluated and discovered a novel antigen, which they named MYC antigen. And this has been shown to also lead to transfusion reactions, particularly hemolytic reactions, and decreasing the efficacy of packed red blood cell transfusions. And so most of the cats that we see on a daily basis have a MYC antigen on their red cell. The problem becomes when we come across a cat that does not have the MYC antigen on the red cell, they're going to have allo antibodies already developed. And so we could have a cat that's never had a previous transfusion, that is a type A cat and gets type A blood, but if they lack the MYC antigen, they may start to have a hemolytic reaction. And we're starting to see this more commonly as we test for it. So pre-transfusion major cross-matching could potentially identify these incompatibilities due to the alloantibodies that are not going to be found on our traditional AB blood type kits. So the objective of this study was to evaluate the influence of the major cross-match on transfusion efficacy. And this was mainly based on the change of PCV following the transfusion of packed red blood cells to cats. There were 209 total cats evaluated receiving 233 transfusions for anemia of various reasons. The main ones were blood loss and hemolytic transfusion um, causes. 43 of the transfusions in this study were cross-match compatible, and 190 were not screened for cross-match, so they were just blood typed A, A or B and transfused um, based on their blood type. Intervention in this study was the pre-transfusion major cross-match that was done, and again, this was done at a University Veterinary Teaching Hospital, and it was, was Cornell's um, study. And then the measurements and results. Every cat was evaluated based on signalment, their body weight, the dose of red blood cell transfusion that was given, the pre-transfusion PCV as well as the post-transfusion IV fluids during the transfusion, as well as the major cross-match data available. The results of this study showed that the mean pre-transfusion PCV was significantly lower for cross-match transfusions compared to the non-cross-match which makes sense, those cats that were selected for cross-matching were likely going to be the more severely affected patients and were likely going to have a lower PCV to begin with. The PCV was also, um, the PCV post-transfusion was significantly greater for the cross-match compatible transfusions compared to non-cross-match. So those cats in the study that did receive a cross-match had a significantly higher increase in their PCV compared to non-cross-match. Interestingly, in this study, though, the packed red blood cell dose, the cross-match status, and the pre-transfusion PCV were independent predictors of the change of PCV. And so, obviously, the more red blood cells you give, you're certainly going to change the PCV. However, as the study was evaluating, the cross-match status was also a predictor of the PCV. So if you had a cross-match compatible patient, you were going to have a higher PCV post-transfusion. The other thing that this study looked at, which I found, uh, you know, certain questions 
that I rose when I was reading the study was the difference in the IV fluids that were given. Uh, there was no difference between those two. Certainly the dilution of IV fluids could play a part in the post-PCV. The time from the transfusion that was given and the time that the PCV was tested was no different between those that were cross-matched and those that were non-cross-matched. Both had a PCV drawn about two hours, which is pretty standard after the transfusion. And so we certainly found that that was nice that the researchers evaluated this because those are certainly questions that you would have um, to determine why there was a difference in the PCV. So this study concluded that administration of a type-specific as well as a cross-match compatible red blood cell transfusion resulted in a significantly greater increase in the post-transfusion PCV compared to those cats that did not receive a cross-match. The study concluded as well that future prospective studies are needed to evaluate the effect of cross-match in transfusion efficacy in cats is warranted. So my takeaway from this study is, and, and certainly in daily practice, we're already doing this, some of our cats that uh, need more than one transfusion, you're going to be cross-matching them no matter what on the second transfusion. However, what we're starting to do is look at these cats dependent on certainly client financial constraints as well as the underlying disease process. We're recommending cross-matching on the first blood transfusion, and that's because we still don't have a mechanism of looking for the MYC antigen, and there are some speculations that there's other antigens out there that we haven't determined yet, above and beyond the type A and the type B allo antibodies. So I think that it's important to at least consider this moving forward, especially if you're in a large hospital, referral hospital setting that has quite a few transfusions that are given to consider cross-matching these cats on the first go around. Because I think that when you look at giving blood to a cat and the expense of that may be somewhere around 300, 350 a transfusion, I'd like to get the maximum benefit out of that transfusion. So if I need to pay for a cross-match prior to doing that, I think it's well worth it. And, and now that they have the Alvedia cross-match kits out, um, that is a nice uh, way to cross-match that is very easy and convenient. It only takes about 20 minutes. Um, it's very similar to the Alvedia type kits that are out, and so I think as we start to see that uh, used more commonly in practice, we're going to start seeing more cross-matching available and certainly performed in both cats and dogs. So that's it this week on Hollihan's Hot Topics.